Hi everybody. So I'm going to be talking about biodiversity as a theme and things that you can do in your school. So a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about link quite well with the school grounds aspect of eco schools. And I thought I'd start talking to you outside because I think that's a good place to kind of show some examples of things that you can be doing that link to biodiversity. So the first thing I was going to show you was building bug hotels. So you can make them as big or as small as you want. You might want to do little ones with your eco team. You might want to do a big one. And it's quite simple. You can just use whatever materials you have lying around. Um, I've done it before with plastic bottles. You can use old cups. Um, and then it's about filling them with leaves and twigs and pine cones, bamboo, whatever you have lying around. And then you then the children then have the opportunity to have a look so i'm just going to show you one that we made in the summer holiday so just here so we just used things that we had lying around so bricks old pallets and um, we've got pine cones and we've got things stuffed in there and the children came up with it and built it together as part of our summer school it's something you might want to do as a project with your eco council and then the children can also come and sort of step up and look in and see if they can see anything in there we just used a variety of all different things so we've got like a welly boot there we've got buckets there all different natural materials tires anything just to see what the creatures might like so that's one thing that you can do to encourage different things in towns especially if you don't have a huge outdoor space you can make the bug hotels as big or as small as you'd like okay second thing is about the different things that you plant in your school so i've talked before about the woodland trust so they offer free tree and bush packs to school so normally they do it at two times of the year so you get pack sent out in November and in March I believe the November one is now closed but you can order your packs for March and all you need to do is make sure that you understand the size where you can plant your trees and bushes your saplings and also you need information like your coordinates um, and who owns the land so you might want to talk to your caretaker and site team about what to do and obviously Again, it's an activity you can do with your eco team. You can get them to plant the trees and then like have monitors to come and water the trees regularly because otherwise trees need a lot of water and a lot of care, otherwise it's not going to work. I think with our saplings, we had them in pots first of all and watered them before we planted them to make sure that they would survive. Um, another thing with biodiversity is wildflowers. So this time of year is the perfect time to start planting your wildflower seeds. Um, I know that a lot of the time you hear instructions like just about scattering but you also need to prepare the ground in the right way otherwise things won't come up. I've tried it before, I've just scattered wildflower seeds over the field and nothing, nothing happened. Um, so you need to make sure the ground is soft and um, you can use a rotavator to air the ground and also make sure it's clear of things like grass so that the wildflowers aren't choked by other weeds and grass and then you can plant the seeds and again an activity you can do with your eco team for your class and you just need to make sure you water the area regularly so that they have plenty of opportunities to grow so those are ways that you can invite a variety of different things into into your school grounds to then look at biodiversity look at different species look at food chains look at food webs look at predators, look at herbivores, and look at perhaps the diversity of plant life that you have in your school. I mean, you can. Go, we all know about doing bug hunts, but you could also have a look at identifying different types of trees and plants. Um, I know that the RSPB do a watch in, I think it's January. Then you've also got the butterfly one in the summer so there's lots of different schemes you can take part with where you're identifying different species within your school grounds and I think if the children see and learn about them you know get the magnifying glasses out drawing whatever it might be it helps them have a greater appreciation for nature and for different species and they're more likely to want to take care of it so I hope that helps with those few tips and I'll see you soon